At this time in our program, we're going to have a discussion aligning our event with our mission. Would you please welcome Tappet and Protect Your Pipes Coordinator for the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments, John Degton, the owner of Veterans Compost, Fritz Gottschalk, from D.C. Central Kitchen's Culinary Job Training Program, Instructor Anand Shantam, and the Associate Dean of GW's College of Professional Studies, Adele Ashkar. Hi, thank you for having me. My name is John Degnan. Um, on average, bottled water costs 300 times more than tap water and requires 2,000 times more energy to produce and distribute. DC Water estimates that our district consumes 18,000 disposable plastic bottles every hour, 70% of which end up in landfills. That's a lot of waste. In order to curb this plastic consumption, and promote the value and safety of tap water, a committee that comprises 14 water utilities in our region, DC, Maryland, and Virginia, established the Tappet Metro DC program. Tappet is a network of businesses, eateries, gyms, cafes, um, federal agencies that are committed to refilling any reusable water bottle with free tap water. These partners include local businesses like Sadamo and Compass Coffee, as well as Potbellies, Five Guys, Whole Foods, um, Smithsonian Institutes, the George Washington University. You can find these businesses to refill your reusable bottle using a free smartphone app and online at freetapwater.org. These businesses enjoy free advertising, free promotion, increased visibility, increased brand awareness as a green business, and we are all able to avoid spending money on unsustainable bottled water. Um, yes, partnering, yep. Uh, <laughs> we are privileged enough to live and work in a community in a region where clean, highly regulated tap water is accessible to the majority of the public, and we need to take advantage of that. Download the Tap at Metro DC app and go to freetapwater.org to learn more about the program learn more about our region's tap water quality, and how you can unite uh, in our efforts to becoming a more sustainable region. Thank you. Look at that. Okay, you're probably wondering why is a sensibly dressed man standing in front of you in a t-shirt and a pair of shorts gonna be talking to you? I'm Fritz Gottschalk, I'm the owner of Veteran Compost here in DC. Uh, I'm one of the two branches of Veteran Compost. Our, our main branch is up in Aberdeen, Maryland, our second branch is in uh, Clifton, Virginia, where we own and operate two composting facilities that are fully licensed, fully permitted to process and create organic compost from food scraps and, uh, and wood chips. Uh, in Aberdeen, we process 10 to 20 tons of food scraps per day. In Clifton, Virginia, we process four to five tons of food scraps per week. That's about 20,000 tons of food scraps diverted from a landfill every year by our small company. Uh, veteran Compost, we do three things. First thing we do is we collect food scraps residentially and commercially. Aberdeen is our main commercial uh, processing facility. Here in DC, we focus on residences and small offices and small operations. We also do special events. The lunch that you're about to eat this afternoon is gonna be composted by Veteran Compost. We have some volunteers from the sustainability department there helping us out. Uh, the second thing we do is we make organic compost. We focus on food scraps and wood chips only because that's what creates organic compost for our growers. There's a huge demand in the Maryland, DC, Virginia metropolitan area for organic compost. Only about 10% of that demand is being met, so that's where we fit into the market. Uh, the third thing, which I think is most important that we do, is we hire veterans. Uh, we focus on hiring veterans because we know that that is an area where folks need jobs. Entry-level positions, uh, we have started to get to the point where we can have some management-level positions for veterans. We, we hire other folks, uh, but we, we prefer to hire veterans. Here in DC, six out of the seven employees that I have are veterans. Up in Aberdeen, eight of the 10 employees are, are veterans. Uh, we own and operate two of the three fully licensed permitted composting facilities. This is important. Um, licensed and permitted means that you are regulated by the state and someone is watching over you. Uh, other composting facilities may or may not be licensed. Uh, ours are private. There is a fully licensed public facility in Prince George's County, which produces 10 to 20, I, I wanna say 10,000 yards of compost a year. Um, some of the previous speakers mentioned landfills. 
if you have a problems with your food waste, please give us a call. We'll take care of that. Uh, economic value and jobs. I talked about the jobs that we've created. Uh, there are 15 to 20 local jobs in the Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia, or Aberdeen area that were created by Veteran Compost, a very small organization. Economic value, we have sold six to 8,000 yards of compost or soil additives just this year. Uh, so that does add economic value to local economies uh, here in the D.C. metropolitan area. Um, and that's all I had to say. So thank you. So greetings, everybody. I'm Anand Shantam. I am a culinary instructor at D.C. Central Kitchen. I'm also a graduate of our culinary job training program. And I'm very proud to be here. Um, I was here last year. And uh, Kathleen Maragon um, asked me to come back. My COO, uh, CEO sent me an email and said, they want you back next year. I said, OK, <laughs> for two minutes of my little fame here. I'm going to read um, a script of um, DC Central Kitchen and uh, what we do there. I'm very proud, again, to be representing our organization. Um, I'll talk about Fresh Start Catering, who also will be serving lunch today. Um, some of you might know that DC Central Kitchen is a local nonprofit that fights food waste. Um, we provide culinary training and we deliver healthy food to people in need in the DC area. Um, one of our three social enterprises, again, operated by DC Central Kitchen is our Fred Star Catering. We also operate a school foods program. When I first graduated from DC Central Kitchen, I worked at school foods for three and a half years. I wore my chef coat to show off that I've been promoted as a culinary instructor. Um, so we, uh, and we, DC, and school foods in Washington, D.C., and our Healthy Corners program, we sell produce and healthy snacks at affordable prices to 67 corner stores in areas of the city without convenient access to full-service grocery stores. Most of you may already know about D.C. Central Kitchen's free meal distribution program for which our staff and 14,000 annual volunteers work together to prepare and distribute 5,000 meals a day to nearby homeless shelters. I think that number's gone up to about 6,000. I've been hearing our directors talk about that number being higher now. Um, where am I? We also operate a culinary job training program, I told you about that, that supports men and women through a rigorous 14-week uh, culinary training program that we call Knife Skills and Life Skills. We help individuals with histories of incarceration, addiction, and homelessness, and chronic unemployment, of which myself, I was very um, underemployed for many years. We train lives, we um, unemployment trade lives of our poverty for careers in the culinary and hospitality industry. All of our programs, those that, the, those that generate revenue and those that don't, provide healthy, nutritious meals to our community. But most importantly, they also provide jobs for graduates of our culinary job training program and support our mission to use food as a tool to strengthen bodies, empower minds, and build communities. I hope today you enjoy your lunch that's prepared by our Fresh Start Catering. Thank you. Always go the wrong way. <laughs> Come back. There you go. There we go. <laughs> what a hard act to follow. <laughs> I'm con continuously humbled by the wonderful uh, initiatives that you all have just mentioned. Um, I'm here to tell you that even a big organization like this is making measurable progress. Um, and in the form of our landscape. Um, GW is a very landlocked university as most of our federal government is too. And so it's hard to imagine how we can have a sustainable landscape when all we have are little, um, little planting beds outside of our buildings between the building and the curb. Um, but we are working on that. 
And in 2012, GW adopted what we call our ecosystem enhancement strategy. And let me just uh, mention a few of the goals that were mentioned in that document. Um, and they are to strengthen our wildlife habitat and optimize our natural space, to promote healthy air and climate, to foster clean and abundant water, and to encourage a natural urban environment that helps enhance physical, mental, and social well-being. So that's the context within which our landscape design students and faculty were engaged to come up with guidelines to move our, our campus to become a much more sustainable place. Um, so the guidelines, which are just almost finished right now, um, do three things. The main, main task that it does is to guide our grounds facilities, grounds management teams in their daily and seasonal uh, decisions around maintaining and upgrading all of the little planting areas uh, in our campus. Uh, and so that they can transition what is a very conventional landscape into a much more sustaining and sustainable place over time and within their annual operating budgets, which is really important because the, the economic side of sustainability um, has to be respected and understood. Nobody has the budget to tear everything out and do everything uh, afresh. Um, the guidelines also provide a guide for long-term planning decisions. So when a new building co comes in on campus, excuse me, um, there's a framework for how to approach the planting areas that are left over after the building comes in and you know, uses as much of its building envelope as is permitted. Um, and thirdly, and we're very proud of this, um, it identifies opportunities across our campus where in the future students, faculty, and staff can pick a project and either use it in, as a school project or apply for grants and there, thereby learn um, and um, participate and upgrade our campus. Um, so it's, it's been a really wonderful process and we're beginning to see some of the results. It doesn't come out of the blue. This is really built on some of the initiatives that uh, individuals uh, on our facilities team have been doing. And if you walk through our campus, you might have noticed some little things that have been happening, such as planting herbs instead of annuals in some of our places. So in our Kogan Plaza, for instance, which is over by our library, there's a whole hedge of basil instead of you know, petunias or impatiens or whatever we might have put in the past. We, use, um, we, we, we deploy uh, insects uh, instead of pest control toxics um, in certain places. Um, there are also areas where we have these little, little grassy areas which are just, you know, rugs that, uh, that require you know, spraying and liming and, and mowing. We are gradually eliminating those and we are replacing them with plantings that, um, that are self-sustaining, that will help restore the ecological balance in the area. Of course, we're talking about native plants. <laughs> and native plant communities that live together, that can reinforce each other and be resilient with uh, the approach of climate change and all of the storms, like yesterday's storm, um, that, that we've been getting. So um, part of the goals of our, um, of our process is to, is to really understand uh, the ecology of a downtown area and to bring in that, uh, that that dimension of wildlife uh, so that if you've driven down highways in the spring, haven't you noticed that there are redbud trees and dogwood trees that peep out of the edges of the woods? That is the ecological balance that we're trying to achieve. That's where they belong. So we're trying to encourage our campus to put shade trees above flowering trees, and that multiplies the, uh, the ecological benefits. And that's just one <laughs> example of what we're doing. I'll stop there, there's so much more to say, but thank you all for joining us. And please come outside and join us for lunch across the street in the, in the university yard where we still have huge amounts of annuals, um, which we will always have annuals because they're beautiful, but we're learning to replace them with more sustainable perennials too. So come across the street, the, the wonderful people in the green shirts will, will lead the way uh, and join us for lunch. Thank you.